the wait is over. Today I'm going to show you what I think are the top five low budget upgrades for the Diamondback Recoil. The upgrades I made transformed this bike from a loose feeling clunky beginner bike into a dialed XC machine that will shred with bikes that are twice the cost. One thing I'd like to point out is that I chose these parts solely on price. I'll make sure to link all of the parts in this build or something equivalent in the description below. And make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video for one bonus upgrade as well as an honorable mention. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and tap that bell in one of these corners down here for uh, notifications on when I post my new videos. I am slowly but surely uh, making videos of all the trails in my state and from there I'll start branching out and my goal is to make a video log of every legal trail in the United States of America. So let's dive into the build. Starting with the rear shock. Replacing your stock coil shock with any model of air shock will not only save weight but improve the quality of your ride tremendously. The shock I chose was the DMN air shock. This shock has 50 millimeters of travel and is 286 grams lighter than the stock shock. Make sure to save the booklet that comes with the shock. It has the recommended air pressure based on rider weight. The bushings in this shock are slightly larger than the stock version, so you have two options for mounting it. You can either press out the bushings from your stock shock and use them or modify the bushings in the DMN shock. I chose the latter. The reason I went this route is the tolerances on the stock bushings were rather sloppy which caused the rear end of the bike to wander around quite a bit. In this footage there is a good example. As the rear tire slides off a rock you can see the rear end shift to the right. So I used a file, sander, and bench grinder to resize the DMN front bushing from this size to this size. In an effort to tighten up the rear triangle as much as possible, I left the rear washers slightly oversized to the point of needing to drive them into place with a screwdriver. The result is a significantly tighter rear triangle. As for handling, no words can describe the improvement. Simply put, no more bucking and bouncing. Next is the air fork. Shortly after changing the rear shock, it became clear that the fork needed an upgrade. I decided to go with the Suntour XCR fork with optional remote lockout. After taking the fork to my local bike shop to have the stem cut, star nut installed, and bearing race transferred, installation was straightforward. This fork is light years ahead of the stock fork in terms of handling. It rides smooth and with less jarring, I can ride farther with less arm and hand fatigue. And, an added bonus, it's also about 250 grams or half a pound lighter than the stock fork. Next is the rear derailleur. This upgrade was not in my original plan. However, after wrapping the stock derailleur around the rear axle on my last ride, I was forced to make the upgrade, and I am so glad I did. Shifting with the stock derailleur was a bit sloppy and less than pleasant at times. Ooh, was that ugly? With the new Dior derailleur, shifting is smooth, tight, and predictable. This upgrade will make your ride much more enjoyable, but it only shaves off about 5 grams in weight. The next two upgrades are not only performance related, but are also based on rider preference and or geographical location. Let's talk tires. The stock tires are fine for the right terrain, but didn't provide the traction I needed for the foothills in Piedmont area of North Carolina. The short knobs were prone to cut loose easily in a turn and the thin casings are a magnet for thorns. The tires I chose were a 2.25 first gen Schwalbe knobby neck up front and a 2.2 Kenda Nevigal John Tomac series in the rear. Together, these tires, along with the new suspension, are a lethal combination. This bike climbs like a goat and absolutely rails turns now. Unfortunately, no weight savings with this upgrade. Rounding out the top five, we have handlebars. I chose 780 millimeter wide bars with a 15 millimeter rise, four degree up, and a nine degree back sweep. 
This particular set of bars came off my Marin Hawk Hill when I upgraded that bike. I changed out the handlebars before upgrading the front fork and rear tire, and to be honest, I didn't like the combination. It just didn't feel right. After upgrading the fork and rear tires, the new bars felt right at home. The bars are shown here with locking grips, but I actually prefer the stock grips over these. The extra width provides a more stable platform while actually saving about 41 grams of weight. Bonus upgrade, hydraulic disc brakes. I really thought these would land higher on the list in terms of value for dollar spent. However, in my opinion, the stock mechanical disc brakes work fine if you're riding in areas with less than 2,000 feet of elevation change. If you do upgrade and don't want to cut and bleed brake lines, make sure you choose a set with 800 millimeter long front line and a 1500 millimeter long rear line. I chose the Clark's brakes because they were the cheapest ones I could find in white and within the right hose length. Weight savings on these was about 137 grams. Honorable mention, the seat. After upgrading to the WTB Volt Comp seat, I found it to be a bit of an annoyance. But with its profile, it can be hard to get behind the seat on a steep descent or difficult terrain. For this reason, I don't recommend this upgrade unless you plan on adding a dropper post. This upgrade did save 78 grams. So my final thoughts on the bike. I am absolutely stoked about how the bike turned out. I love this bike. It fits me like a glove. It does everything I need it to do for the trails that I ride. I like it so much so that my Hawk Hill is probably going up for sale. The Hawk Hill has just been collecting dust ever since I bought this bike. I've literally rode it twice. Future upgrades. I got two upgrades planned after this, and that'll probably be the last thing I do to the bike until something breaks. Unless I find a good deal on something, then I might go ahead and upgrade. But one is a new to me wheel set. I got a killer deal on these giant wheels back here. They were takeoffs of a brand new bike, and they are, I know for a fact that they are considerably stiffer than the wheels that are on the bike, so I will be changing them out soon. And to solve the problem with my seat, I'm gonna add a dropper post. Uh, I have to wait on funds for that. I'm kinda of low on funds at the moment, but a dropper post will be added. And I'll do an update video when I add those two upgrades. Again, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so, and tap that bell so you get notifications on the new videos. Thanks for watching, Hicksville MTV.